conservation of momentum, a collision in two dimension lab begins by having each lab group select four of the same type of sheets of carbon paper from the box on the teacher's lab table in exchange for their PHS ID. The carbonized side will have a black or shiny sheen to it. Please select four sheets of the same variety. Please take the four sheets of carbon paper, place them on the floor neatly next to each other, there's no need to tape them together, place them carbon side up, please make sure that the carbon paper does not touch your clothing. Gently and slowly put the sheet of paper over the four sheets of carbon paper that are shiny side up. Secure the paper with three pieces of masking tape, one on either side of the sheet and one at the end. The lab must be secured for the entire duration and must not move. If it moves, one must begin again. You can reach beneath the white sheet of paper and rearrange your carbon paper initially if it needs to be in another location so that the steel spheres will strike it. Taking a look at the apparatus, there is a set screw at the end that can be raised or lowered to change the height. Sight down the plumb line. Looking at the bottom, there is an eyelet screw. Place a dot on your paper beneath that screw and label it O for the origin or the beginning of your vector. Balance one steel sphere by placing it on the set screw. You will initially begin by making sure you have the right height by placing your second steel sphere on the track. It should come, the center of the steel sphere should come to approximately the same height as the one that's resting on the set screw. Please make this adjustment. It's now necessary for us to give the ramp a little bit of a gentle push to change the angle. After we've done this, we're going to place the second sphere at the top of the ramp, always at the top by the screw that denotes the same height as being used each time. Release the ball. I have some meter sticks on the floor to help me because I'm doing this lab without a lab partner. You, however, will have a lab partner. One person will catch the target sphere, the one in the beginning of the track. The other person will catch the incident sphere. Try not to let them bounce on the paper. For my purposes, I have the meter sticks here so I don't have to chase them. You're going to release the ball perhaps 10 times a mark will be made on the paper. Look on your piece of paper for an area or concentration where the steel spheres have hit. Label this as either P incident or P target. Again, that would be PI for incident or PT for target. The target sphere was the one in the very front that you were hitting. The incident was the second sphere. There will be two clusters of points on your diagram. One where the first sphere or target sphere has hit, circle this concentration and label it P for momentum, T for target. The second concentration of points will be the P incident, P for momentum, I for incident sphere. The 
the next thing that we need to do is we need to locate the original momentum or the momentum before the collision. In order to do this, we need to lower the set screw so that the marble will not strike it. You may need to heighten the hex nut so that you can then lower the set screw. Once the set screw is lowered, a marble coming down the track will not strike it. Take the steel sphere, place it at the top of the track, and drop it several times in succession. Again, try to catch it. We now have three clusters of points on our sketch. We have an initial point labeled O beneath our plumb bob. We have PI from the incident sphere, PT from the target sphere, and PO for the original momentum. Do not move your paper. Do a second trial. Since we're going to do a second trial, before I begin that second trial, I will label each of my circled clusters of points as trial one. Spend some time observing your collision. In this case, the steel sphere is hitting the C-clamp, not the steel sphere. Before removing the sheet from the floor, make sure you have two trials. I should see trial 1, PI, PO, PT, trial 2, PI, PO, PT. Draw a line from O to PO for trial 1 and trial 2. I chose to use the same color blue for each of my original momentum vectors. Use a different color of marker to draw the final momentum vectors for trial 2, PT and PI. Now draw the triangles and find the momentum before and the momentum after. Measure each of these lines in centimeters. Vectors can be moved if one preserves the magnitude or length and direction. Move your vector to the other side so that you will draw a triangle. You will notice that the momentum before should equal the momentum after. This isn't a bad lab at all. We've come very, very close. I would dash that missing piece. If I were going to move the light green vector, it would be drawn in this location. This is the initial momentum on the right hand side of the sketch for trial 2. Wow, I can see that that one is really going to be far off. What's the deal? Oh, I remember. I purposely had the marble hitting the C-clamp so that I could show you things to look out for and things that could go wrong. Now I understand why we've done two trials. This one can surely be discarded because it will not give me the information that the momentum before equals the momentum after. But it's okay because my first trial is fantastic. I'm going to use this for my data. Choose a scale of one centimeter on your lab sheet 
represents one decimeter or 10 centimeters on your real sketch and transfer your drawings to your lab sheet. I should see two sketches for each trial. One with the correct angles and lengths, one showing me the three vectors PI, PO, PT, and the other showing me the triangles.